<gasps> oh. Hello, and what's good, everybody? Boris Plabinski here. You know, cold openings are not my usual M.O., nor are late-night updates, but I wanted to throw a quick one out there and share with you all an eerie incident that occurred earlier this morning. So, here goes. The story starts at two in the morning. I awoke to heavy thunking sounds outside of my bedroom. I managed to get up and open the door to investigate. The noises stopped, and I see nothing unusual. So I'm like, whatever, and go back to bed. Time passes, and suddenly I'm hearing noises again. This time they sound like heavy slow shufflings outside of my bedroom door. I get my half-conscious butt back up again, and I open up the door, and again I look outside, and again, nothing. I go back to bed. 10 a.m. finally rolls around. Not a single thought about the weird noises from earlier that morning crossed my mind. That is, until I go into the kitchen. The room felt and smelt different from the usual. The vibe was sterile. Lemon scented. But what really caught me off guard was what awaited me in the fridge. Upon opening the door, I saw all my sauce bottles were organized perfectly by color and alphabetized. It was the most impressive and terrifying thing I ever did witness. So I'm either working way too hard and I'm gaslighting myself or I'm about to square up to a polite kitchen goblin. You tell me. So before I sign off, I'd like to give a big shout out to Carpanthony Sleekweed for donating all of these glue traps and loaning me his attack paddle. You're a real one. As always, thank you for watching. And until next time, take it easy. Ooh, it's time. Hello. Giant silverfish. I am indeed silver and a fish, but not a silverfish. I am known by the white coats as Sacambum Baspis, but you may address me as Mr. Baspis. Well, uh, Mr. Baspis, you do realize you committed a crime, right? It's what we call in the industry breaking and entering. Ah, while it is true that I entered your residence unannounced. I assure you that I broke nothing. I even went out of my way to clean your lab and arrange your vials as a token of peace. Lab? Vials? You mean my kitchen and my sauce bottles? Is that what you call them? Forgive me. Since leaving my residence, I've come to realize my worldview has its limitations. I hope you found the results satisfactory, as it was quite the timely process. My incredibly powerful arms could have easily destroyed your personal effects had I not been careful. So, I suppose that also makes me a polite kitchen goblin, for whatever that means. <gasps> you overheard me. It's difficult not to eavesdrop when you're making such loud declarations at the tiny video box. How did you get in? Through the ventilation shaft. Where else? Yeah, but how did you even get through there? My body is conveniently shaped. Oh, okay, uh... So what is it that you want from me? I require your assistance, Mr. Borhead Bodbobski. Boris, Boris Blabinski. Right, Mr. Borax, I need your help to fulfill my dream of... Hey, Boris! You in there, buddy? I tried calling you this morning like you asked, but you didn't pick up. 
Choose your words wisely. Uh, hey, friend. Uh, sorry I didn't get back to you sooner. Got a little, uh, tied up. Oh, no worries. I just wanted to know how everything went last night. Oh, yeah. Oh, it went all right. In places I never expected. That's great. Say, how did my attack paddle treat you? Gave that intruder a good wallop in, I hope. So, that's your supplier, yes? Oh, my blob. Come! Allow me. Uh, Boris? You still there? The only thing you gave a good walloping, sir, were my feelings. <coughs> Thank you for watching this latest installment of the Boris Blabinski Show and to all the wonderful people who have donated towards the production. And now, a big ol' shout out to the following people. Bex F and Ari Grace. Thank you so much for sticking around. Hope to see you in part two. And until that day comes, take it easy.